is if you go to their webpage, TABC, right, and you, you look at their About Us section, you see the very thing, the thing they brag about actually on their, their webpage, the second big bullet <laughs> point is they are a, a, a tax collecting entity that they brag about collecting more than $300 million in excess of $300 million a year in tax revenue for the state of Texas. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Better Call Clay podcast. Joining me today in studio is my lovely bride, Alita Caldwell. Hello. Hello, babe. How are you? I'm good. I, I roped her into this sort of the last minute. I, I'm, what I want to talk about today is the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission. Well, what we really want to talk about is why I had to wait three minutes to buy my alcohol on Sunday because it makes such a huge difference in when I start drinking. Well, no, I mean, but if we're fair, I mean, we're not chosen, chosen to start drinking at 11.58, but I mean, what what is the difference between, say, 11.55 and 12 o'clock? <laughs> I have no idea. That's why I agreed to do this podcast. Right, 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 right. So, well, let's, let's frame this thing properly, though. Let's talk first about... Texas has some very archaic, uh, archaic. I'll, I'll say archaic, and, and and for those of you who don't know what that means, that means like ancient, like very, like third century, like their their rules like have no rhyme or reason. Old, <laughs> old, and the agency that's tasked with uh, basically creating these rules and enforcing these rules is equally archaic. And I'll just go ahead. And, I don't like the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission at all. I find them useless. All right. I mean, I'll use the word. Really? Useless. Completely useless, Com babe? Completely. Completely useless. As in, they need to go away. Like, I mean, I was super surprised that they let the delivery of alcohol happen during the coronavirus. Right. We're still in the Rona. Right. right? We're, we're still in, in the middle. We're in the pandemic. And yes, they have allowed delivery. You can get beer and, and wine and, and... I can get hard liquor. Hard liquor to go. To go, but I can't get alcohol on a Sunday at 11 o'clock, even though I'm not going to drink it now. See, beer, is, so you're doing your shopping a little before noon, because right. what, what are you trying to do there? You're trying to beat the Baptist, right? Right, I'm trying to beat the people coming out of church. Right. I'm trying to get there a little bit early. Right, So, and, and we're doing church online, so we're we're not going all the way till noon, so we're we're heading to the grocery store to get our our, our beer to float in our pool, and it's eleven fifty five, and we have to do a holding pattern so we can check out. So yeah. let's talk about what is it. Let's let's go and talk. I don't. I want to hear about why you think they're completely worthless. <laughs> worthless. <laughs> I, worthless. Worthless. But we have to start out with exactly what is the TABC. Okay, so the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission is is just that. It's a commission of people, right? There, but they have an enforcement branch. Uh, they basically have officers with guns and badges, uh, but they are tasked with regulating the entire uh, liquor and, and alcohol uh, manufacturing, distribution, and marketing and sales uh, uh, sales trade. I mean, basically, the entire alcoholic beverage trade. And so, uh, but more importantly, and, and I think this is where this is how they've stuck around so long is if you go to their webpage, TABC, right, and you, you look at their About Us section, you see the very thing, the thing they brag about actually on their, their webpage, the second big bullet <laughs> point is they are a, a, a tax collecting entity that they brag about collecting more than $300 million in excess of $300 million a year in tax revenue for the state of Texas. Wait, so stop. Let's be real. The right. reason they allowed alcohol to be delivered was because the state of Texas couldn't afford the tax <laughs> decrease that would happen because they shut everything down, right? Well, it's even more complicated than that. Not only did they not want to lose that tax revenue, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but to add a layer to the bad onion, okay, <laughs> the package store, right? Mm -hmm. The liquor store, we know them as liquor stores, package stores. Their lobby is so strong. And 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 a lot of these package stores have been around since the 30s. Why? What do you what I don't know what that term means, package store. Well, it, it's just a fancy word for liquor store. Okay. So we know our local liquor stores, right? Right? The one by my house is Potter's Liquor. Yeah. I is that mean, a packer? Pa that, that that's, a, that's a package okay. store. Now, we don't want to just stare at Potter's cuz we like those people we and love we, them. and we shop there. But they are involved in a, what I'm going to call a very corrupt system. There's some really strange laws as it relates to 
liquor licenses. Okay. So the, the ability to sell uh, whiskey versus beer. So, right. For instance, Walmart, HED, any any publicly traded company in in uh, Texas cannot apply for and get a liquor license. Well, because and and I know this because I bought a bottle of alcohol or tried to <laughs> at the register at HEB, and because of its alcohol content, it was a Sunday. It told me I could not buy the bottle. I'm like, they're selling so, it at HEB, but their system was to keep them out of. J TABC jail, right. it literally told them at the register, you can't buy this on Sundays. But it wasn't just any alcohol. So the funny thing about that story is uh, you were trying to buy a bottle of port wine. Sure was. And port wine, for those of you who don't know anything about alcohol, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a, I, I, like to, I like to brew beer, so a little minor hobby of mine. Port wine has an alcohol concentration of about 20% because it's fortified or added to it is other uh, a higher distilled spirit right so sherry so they put uh, a little higher alcohol content in port wine and so it, it clocks in at about 20 percent whereas your average cabernet from california comes in at about 14 and a half percent alcohol well the tabc cutoff for whatever <laughs> random reason stupid reason right useless reason it's, it's the same reason why at 11 4, 58 uh -huh. you can't buy the alcohol but at S noon you can 17 percent is a magic cutoff. okay so anything above 17 percent, you can't sell on a sunday you were trying to buy the port wine on a sunday oh, that was your fatal mistake can't can't buy it. we can't, can't have can't have drunkards on sunday so that, that leads me into my next question so why do you believe that the tabc has outlived their usefulness basically i mean they were they, there were there had to have been a purpose i mean collecting taxes is one of the purposes right. but why why in your opinion have they outlived their usefulness well there's a couple of reasons it's, it's probably two or threefold one there's the tax revenue tremendous tax revenue right i mean we generate a lot of revenue from basically regulating the business too the lobby that is with the package stores it's kind of like the farmer it <laughs> what the uh texas farmer get what, what? The texas farmer wants the texas farmer gets same thing with the package stores they have a tremendously powerful lobby that has helped create and foster these rules and has helped keep this agency around uh for instance let me give you a, a really wild scenario i told you how publicly traded companies can't have a, a liquor license right well any small business is limited generally to only being able to have five liquor licenses so i can have if i'm gonna say i, I want to start caldwell's package door right okay well first of all i'm a brand new business so i'm not pre-1949 okay that's important oh, that's important okay so pre-1949 pre is important also too nobody in my family has ever owned a package store so those two things going against me which in small hey, business hey, world hey, that doesn't make any sense uh, hang on Go a minute ahead. so if i if i start a package store i can open one and i'm allowed to do five other locations but we know we're in houston we have specs liquor right mm -hmm. i love specs liquor i love it tremendous yeah. selection there's they're all over the place they're all a lot almost of like total wine too correct okay those stores uh were either a the pre-1949 which or, they're not specs can't possibly be pre uh, I, I don't know you maybe, have to look that up okay maybe, maybe not or two the really i'm just going to go ahead and say it, the inbred part of this is th th if you're within the same family right if your family had a liquor store and you can show that you're a certain degree of consanguinity or affinity marriage or blood mm -hmm. separated from the person who had the first store you can keep going and have as many stores as you want so long as it's in the family so i should have married somebody that was in the liquor business babe if you'd have married somebody that had a package <laughs> store y'all could have done as many liquor stores as you wanted that does not make any sense like i mean that is the most i mean i know that i know that texas is sometimes behind on their on their things is there any way that we're ever i mean do you see a way how do we get thing, rid of how do you get rid of it because right. i mean when you're when you're telling me things right. like that the absurdity of it as a small business owner is that basically i'm limited to who i married on the and the amount that i can expand my package store well so the thing about the texas is right <laughs> we tout ourselves on being a pro-business free market state right i mean we hear that everywhere the governor says it. oh you know we, do you see the look on my face right. <laughs> not at all <laughs> not at all and especially as it relates to the liquor business because it is there's nothing free market about it it is so tightly regulated and there are such archaic rules we call a lot of these laws the blue laws right okay well, and so, uh, but yes, okay, so let's get back to how do we get rid of the TABC? How do we get rid of these archaic laws? Well, in Texas, we have created this system, this commission, 
Okay. Because that's what we do, right? We can lead, we create another commission. We're going to govern us, yeah. Yeah, to govern the govern, <laughs> right? Right? Uh, right. And so we have a sunset commission. Okay. The purpose of the sunset commission is to periodically review state agencies and determine have they outlived their usefulness. And so what you have to do, if you're at home listening, right, our listeners, this is your call to action. Garrett, our producer, he always likes to say, what's the call to action? <laughs> he loves it. Right. It's his thing. So the call to action here is, uh, and, and we may even probably, we'll get with Tyler and we'll figure out how to make this work, that you need to write your state legislature and your state senator. And you need to let them know that it's time for the TABC to go. I mean, what a waste of my taxpayer we, dollar. Right. We need to put the TABC... Mm -hmm. on the sunset commission books we need to have them appearing before the sunset commission so we can get rid of the tax collectors with guns and, and be out of the business of regulating stupid archaic laws for instance i mean was i really going to turn it into the to the devil if i bought beer at 11 55 <laughs> versus 1201 you might no i wasn't you should be in church babe why well, that and that's just it that gets us back to the essence of the blue law the blue laws are create and for, for those of you who don't know have you ever tried to buy a car on a sunday that's a no-go you can't you cannot it's it, they're closed right you ever tried to buy a motorcycle on a sunday cannot do it i, I think they're closed too no can't you, do it you ever tried to buy liquor on a sunday you cannot <laughs> like h-e-b told me i mean literally well, I, not, not just wine and beer because we're, we're you can buy that but buy i mean that. anything over the 17 percent, you cannot buy can't buy it on sunday at all depending it doesn't matter what time it is because you should be in church you ever try to buy ever try to buy liquor on uh thanksgiving day christmas day or new year's day i mean i haven't kept track of it but well you can't do it you can't do it either no they're, they're not open babe uh, babe right I mean, we got to, you know, so look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bashing religion, right? I'm not Christian. So absolutely. However, I mean, I don't, why can I not, I'm not smart enough to make my own decisions about what I drink, you know, and when I drink it, I mean, and that's the personal standpoint for you for as a small business owner, it's frustrating to me that I have a government agency regulating how I can run my business, even if I follow all of their own rules. So there's two different th schools of thought there, right? One school of thought is businesses are losing revenue because, well, for instance, package stores, right? right? Going back to the liquor store, only allowed to operate for 66 hours in a week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Wait, but you can deliver alcohol from a restaurant 20, right. 24 right. hours a day, seven days a week. Well, only during the Rona, you know, only during the Rona. Uh, <sighs> but yeah, so 66 hours a week is the limit of your retail. Uh, and many of those stores operate on small margins because they're small family businesses. And so we're literally limiting their ability to make sales, right? We keep our store open on Sunday. Now, granted, we don't open till one. Correct. So we're still, our employees still going to church, spending time with their families. Uh, we don't expect as many sales on Sunday, so we don't have as large a staff, but it's still a day where we can, I mean, we can literally make the weekly payroll with just a Sunday's worth of sales. Oh, right. I mean, Sunday's not an option for me. Like I need to, I have to be open. We have to grind it out on Sunday. Right, right. Yeah. But we're not allowing package stores to do this. Now, the flip side of it is uh, a lot of people believe or, or, or see stores being closed on Sunday as sort of a progressive labor movement um type of platform where hey it's important for people the average worker to be at home on sunday with their family right we want to protect the sanctity of family time and things like that so there's this balance right so you can cut both ways but i guess my, my point with all this is let's let the business owner make that decision and not the state government and, less regulation right less regulation let's let the market regulate itself Right. I mean, nobody told me I have to not open till one o'clock, but I, we do that because that's what the market Correct. drives. I Correct. mean, I don't really need to. Right. So in essence, yes, we, we have this mechanism where we can get rid of the TABC if we want to. And, and it's a grassroots thing. You're going to have to write your legislature, your, your, your state representative, your state senator. Uh, in our area, that's Dr. Greg Bonin, state representative and Senator Larry Taylor, um, at least in the Friendswood area, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can get online and you can look for your local state legislator, your st state representative, your state senator, uh, write them and, and you need to tell them, hey, time for the TABC to go before the Sunset Commission. Time to decide we need to we need to reform our Texas liquor laws. We need to get rid of this agency that that quite honestly 
uh, it, it, well, one of the things it's done, so it's, it's, find it, it's found itself not having a purpose during the coronavirus pandemic. Right? So we're going to make a purpose, right? We're a government agency. <laughs> right, we've got to have something to do, right. right? So what did we do? Well, we sent our enforcement agents out to conduct sting operations and to find bars and restaurants, uh, places serving alcohol that weren't adhering to social distancing, right? They, they weren't keeping patrons six feet apart or more. Right, and, because bars are closed again. Right, right, well, but they were open for a right. time. And so they weren't keeping people far enough apart and they weren't requiring people to wear a mask. And so what did TABC do? Well, suddenly, hey, now it's a violation of your liquor license if you don't follow these social distancing guidelines. So they've yanked some people's liquor licenses across the state because quite frankly, they didn't have anything better to do. And, and yanking the license now causes administrative issues that will result in more revenue. Well, and it just, I mean, from a business standpoint, it's just a regulatory, I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i already a bar and I'm already losing my, regu- my, my revenue. I mean, I'm thankful every day I don't own a bar. Um, but now I'm also going to be cited for not following the rules when quite frankly, some of my customers coming in, they're not impressed by the rules. They, they don't want, I mean, yeah, they don't necessarily want to follow the rules. Again, it all gets back to how the TABC has become or probably has been for the last, uh, I don't know, we'll call it 30 years. Um, what's the word I use? Useless. Useless. So, yes. yeah, I think we got to continue to talk about things like this because it goes back to what we say on my podcast all the time. Knowledge is power. And and unless people understand the systems and we're kind of getting a, a microscope of the systems right now because, I mean, we're in the we're in the corona. <laughs> So quick call to action, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a legal podcast. I'm a lawyer. Uh, You can face criminal penalties for violating TABC regulations, uh, providing alcohol to minors. Uh, If you're a bar or restaurant over serving people, uh, serving people past your your designated hours, uh, selling to people on Sundays, uh, the wrong kind of alcohol can lead to not only administrative penalties with your license, but also criminal penalties. We're talking six months in county jail. We're talking a year in county jail. As the business jail. owner? As the business owner, as a bartender, as a server, as any employee that that has a TABC certification, you can be jailed for some of these violations. Hmm. Uh, and that's where I come in, right? I'm the right. lawyer. Uh, so if you find yourself in that situation, you find yourself on the wrong end of a TABC criminal matter, uh, you better call Clay. So I, I just remind everybody, you can find us on YouTube, Anchor Podcast, uh, Facebook at the Law Office of John C. Caldwell, and also uh, our website, www.claycaldwell.law. Uh, if you find yourself facing the TABC, the very useless organization that it is, uh, call Clay. So thanks, honey, for coming on and giving the small business side of this and for uh, talking about the TABC today with me. No problem. Thanks, babe.